adding large mixed numbers. You have the following two examples. In order to be successful in watching this video, you will have to know how to actually add fractions. So you can watch one of my videos that is based on fractions and understanding common denominators. So when you are dealing with adding larger mixed numbers, there is an advantage of just simply working with the whole components as one and working with the fractions separately. So what I mean by that is that whenever you are having mixed numbers and you are adding them together, what you can do without changing things into improper fractions, you can literally just simply take your two whole components, and that will be 42, and add them up, and 59. So I can add these two up, and that will be 2 plus 9, which is 11, carry my 1, and that will be giving me 10. So in total, I have 101. And that is the whole component. Now next, what you do is you simply take your two fractions and you will add those up. Now, of course, in order to add them, they have to have to have a common denominator. So we have 3 over 16 plus 5 over 12. And now finding a common denominator between them. So we can use the same method that I showed you in the fractions video, and you can rewatch that one if you like. So I will prime, use primes to try to reduce these. So taking the first 16, I know that 2 goes into 16, 8 times. 2 goes into 12, 6 times. So I have reduced it by the prime 2. Now I can use 2 again because 2 goes into 8, and it goes in 4 times. It goes into 6 3 times. So I have now reduced it by 2 again. So well, I'm not done because I can reduce 4 again by 2. That's going to give me a 2. 2 does not go into 3, and we simply leave it as is. Now finally, we have 2 again. So that will complete this column. Remember, we have to go until we stop at 1. 2 doesn't go into 3, so again, we just carry it down. Now, since we're done with the first column, we can also close the second column. And that is by dividing by 3, and that's going to give us 1. And now we have both columns by 1. So remember that all of these primes, once you multiply them, gives you the lowest common denominator. So if I'm multiplying this through, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. That's your lowest common denominator between the two fractions. And now, of course, how many times does 16 go into 48? Turns out it goes 3 times. That's our multiplier. So now we say 3 times 3, that's 9. How many times does 12 go into 48? 4 times. So that's 5 times 4, which is 20. Now having a common denominator, I can say 9 plus 20. So that is 29 over 48. Now can I reduce this? And you can check for yourself that you cannot reduce this any further. So our answer overall to the first question is 101 that came from adding my whole numbers and 29 all over 48. And that is by adding the two fractions. Okay, so this is again, remember, in reduced form because we want a proper fraction here. 
And that completes that first example. Let's take a look at the second example, this one right here. So in our second example, we have 105 and we have 210 as our whole components. Okay, and we're adding. Now when we add, so we can take these two numbers, so 105 plus 210 to get us the whole component. So that's going to be 5, 1, 3. So this equals 315. And now I need to concentrate on the fractions. 7 over 8 plus 1 over 6. So let me do it over here. 7 over 8 plus 1 over 6. I need a common denominator between them. So you can write your table and prime factorize these. Or, of course, you can guess. Okay. So if you like, you can, you can guess and see. Okay, so the lowest common denominator actually will be 24. Okay, so how do I know that? So I'll show you anyways. And for those not interested, you can forward the video. So the 8, okay, so I'm going to start. Remember, I need primes. So 2 goes into 8 four times. And 2 goes into 6 three times. Okay, now, what prime goes into 4? Okay, that's 2 again, so that will leave me a 2. 2 doesn't go into 3, so remember we just simply rewrite it. And now I have 2, which is prime, so it's clearly divisible by 2, and that's going to give us the 1 that we need in the column. 2 doesn't go into 3, so we rewrite it. And now, finally, to finish this column 3, we will divide by 3. And 3 goes into 3 once. And remember, in order to find the lowest common denominator, we have to multiply these primes that I highlighted. And they will give you 24. So my lowest common denominator here was 24. So now let's change our fractions. So 8 goes into 24 three times. So that's our multiplier. That's what we have to multiply the top by. So 3 times 7 is 21. 6 goes into 24 four times. So 1 times 4 is 4. And that will now give us 25 all over 24. Now we have to check if we can reduce this, and we can because it's an improper fraction. So 24 goes into 25 actually once, and then you have a remainder of 1 left over. Okay. So now what I have is, I have to go back here to the top. I have 315 plus 1 and 1 over... 24. And just as we did here with the whole components, well, we can add our whole components here. So 315 plus 1, that is 316. And then there's no fractions to add. So this becomes 1 over 24. And that is your answer. So in order to add mixed numbers, it actually doesn't matter if the mixed numbers are large or small. Now, it makes a lot more sense when they're large. Then what you do is you simply work with your whole components, add them, and then you will work with your fractions and add those. And then you reduce as much as you can. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful.